It clearly starts with you being the physician that does the angioplasty and puts the stint in. But doing research and reporting about those patients and reporting those results allows you to magnify the effects of that to thousands and even millions of people. The start of Mission Lifeline really came and was stimulated from Minnesota. So our development of regional STEMI systems and the success of those systems, um, the fact that we could provide timely access to PCI, to opening the artery in a patient with a closed artery, uh, really, um, I think, demonstrated to the whole United States that this was possible. And what we knew was there was a relative rural-urban disparity so that the care that you got in the city, close to PCI centers, was different than that throughout the state of Minnesota. So we started, we got together, and we put together a plan. Everyone said, we could do it faster if. This is not about me. This is about thousands of people throughout Minnesota who helped make these systems work. My primary research interests are two areas treatment for patients with heart attacks, and the second is the treatment of patients who have blockages that you can't fix. Uh, we need new options for them. So our goal with stem cell therapy is really to enhance the body's natural process of regeneration. And I think that'll be a major focus for my next 10 years of my career. You know, when I, when I made my mind on the evening of my uh, heart attack, I said, if I can make it out, I want to spread the message that primary prevention and high healthy lifestyle are the keys. Now, I'm a, a electrophysiologist, I consider to be a, a super, super specialist in cardiology. And I deal with uh, people with heart rhythm problems. I realized that to prevent sudden cardiac arrest, the big impact is really to go to the community to really lower the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease. So two years ago, uh, I um, helped to introduce AHA uh, to be part of the basic life support training session in one of the largest uh, cardiovascular conferences in China. There's a, such a shortage of physicians taking care of patients. Therefore, the emphasis is more on acute care, so there's a lack of emphasis on primary prevention in cardiovascular disease in China. And so I actually went around uh, in Beijing, Nanjing, and Shanghai, and, and different places, and gave public seminars in the public library, and this all with my own time and my own expense. And, and try to influence people and uh, to change their lifestyle. I think this award is not just for myself. I think it's really for people who are willing, uh, physicians who are willing to spend time outside their duty to help people in the community. I don't live the day for the future. I live the day for the moment. Fred had been born with a bicuspid aortic valve. Probably won't have to worry about this until you're um, in retirement, you know, 60, 65 years old. So it came as a real surprise to us when, maybe 10 years later only, um, that we were told he was going to have to have the valve replaced. Uh, they put in a mechanical valve and um, went home and uh, that was it. Uh, exactly one year to the day later, uh, I came home actually the day before the 26th, I had uh, a massive pressure in the back of my head, and uh, that's the last I remember. And they did a CT and um, said he had a bleed on the brain. And I remember them telling us to uh, hope for the best, um, but expect the worst. Told my wife to please have uh, all the boys.
come and say goodbye uh, because less than 1% will live. Fred did eventually come out of the coma and um, we were very grateful. He ended up having another stroke and we learned that um, there was a, a clot on the valve. So they took me into surgery and I guess according to my wife, I coded a couple of times on a table. I remember waking up and <clears throat> asking the question, did I live? It was a, a long recovery. Um, I did start back to work. I always had drive. Uh, three days later, we got a call. They had found um, bacteria on the, on the um, valve that they had removed from Fred. So they started uh, drug therapy for him, um, significant antibiotics. When April, um, he started developing seizures and it just felt like it was never going to end. Um, despite it all, we got those under control, or he did, and continued on with his, his therapies. There are two things that strike me and put me in awe so many times. I wish I had the same ability that he has to um, only look forward. Um, Fred has never said, why me? Or, I can't do this anymore, I can't do that. Uh, don't give up, set goals and move forward. And don't let anybody tell you you can't make it.